Good morning, everyone. I thought this morning I would, let me get my light on here for you all. There we go. I thought this morning I had a few of you ask me about painting uh, ranunculus. So I thought I would go ahead and just show you how I would paint those. So today for my brushes, I will be using, let's see, I'm going to use my six uh, Princeton because it's got a fine point on it and I think that's going to be helpful. Ranunculus, as I paint them, have some very thin lines. Um, you could also remember for you beginners, there's this whole set of Degados I share with you all the time. There's actually a set of 10, really inexpensive, and I've been using these for about six months. Snappy, hold their points, love them. Um, if you don't quite want to jump into investing in a Princeton brush, I will be using my My Langs today. And one of the reasons I'm going to use them is number one, as you know, I can't afford to paint with Winsor Newton every day. These are really creamy, really vibrant. And I'm going to use um, this 48 set. Keep in mind, they have the 36 set for if you don't want those metallics. Um, but I like this 46 or 48 set because it does have these kind of iridescence in there. So I'm going to use that pink and maybe a little bit of some cad orange. Let me just grab a sheet here and let's kind of play with some of those colors. And I'll show you. You could also use, if you're using Windsor Newton, you could use like an opera. Um, opera rose would be really pretty. So here is that iridescent pink, and that's really almost the identical color that I want to have for my ranuncula. And then I will get maybe the brighter pink. So let's just see. Yeah, I think those will be really pretty together. And maybe even just a tad of a cad yellow in there just maybe in the center and then of course I'll be using my sap green for my leaves and stems and I'll also create a little bud for you all right so I think I quite like that color palette again you could use opera rose would be really pretty and a quin magenta if you're using uh, Windsor Newtons and then cad yellow and sap green is just fine. I could also add in there a little bit. These are the my lane colors That beautiful sap green I think is really pretty too. So When I start and by the way, um, this is 140 pound um, Cold press paper as you know, I love my artisto pads. This is their old um cover the new covers are a beautiful quin magenta 140 pound and cold press and i love these i talk about these all the time because they're in this binder i can keep all my little practice paintings together i label them winter summer um, i can refer back to them and if i do want to give one as a gift they're perforated so i can tear it out but they've got a lovely lovely um, 100 percent cotton type of texture and feel to them and they do handle quite a bit of water and they're reasonable okay so let's go ahead and get started here just going to wet my brush i've got to make sure you have your wash and your rinse uh, waters this is my little meat in container i love um, for watercolors you always want to make sure you're washing and rinsing your brush because they're so transparent you don't want the last color you use to carry over into the next color so make sure you wash and rinse your brush and I've got my paper towel just for dabbing all right so for the center of the ranunculus and most of the leaves I mean the ranunculus I've grown here the the petals are very thin and they're kind of tight into a circle so these are relatively easy to paint I'm going to be using mostly the tip of my brush, not even the belly, which is the middle of the brush. And for the most part, in order for me to use the tip, I'm going to rest my hand on my paper and very light pressure, just in circles. 
okay? So for you, when you do this light pressure, your brush is up and down. I'm gonna hold mine a little to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and this is where those brush strokes are so important. So if you haven't checked out my brush strokes um, tutorial, maybe uh, check that out and I'll link it for you here. I'll find that and link it for you. So I'm gonna pick up some of that pink and I've actually got a bit in my palette here. So I'm gonna put it in this well here. I'm just picking it up, making sure you're always picking up your paint with the side of your brush so that you're not damaging that beautiful tip. We always want to preserve. So I've got that in my palette. And then I might um, just add a little bit of that brighter pink into my palette just so it's ready to go. And there we go. Okay, so let's start by just drawing these circles for our ranuncula. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I think because I noticed when I was looking at some pictures of my old ranunculas, there was quite a bit of a light green in the center. Let me put a little bit of that in my palette here. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of that green just in the center. And I'm going to be picking up my brush as I'm making these circles, almost like a rose. And then I'll go in and just wash a little bit of that out and pick up some of my darker green, so that sap green, and start drawing some circles now it's like a rose if you've watched my rose tutorials, but yet my petals aren't getting bigger and bigger necessarily, maybe just a tiny bit. They're staying pretty tight. And I might just add a little bit of water with a damp brush here and there. But for the most part, I wanna be able to see those petals. Now I'm gonna go in with my pink and start creating these long, thin C strokes. And look how beautiful the pink and the green go together. I think that's such a lovely combination. So I'm going in these circles and I've even, I'll do another one after this. I've even see, seen people just literally do circles and that's it. And you can certainly do that. Now I did make a couple thicker petals here and I'm doing that by just taking my tip point and then press down a little bit. And it creates a wider brush stroke. Now I'll go in just a tiny bit and touch in with that magenta or hotter pink, Quinn magenta if you're using Winsor Newton, just using the tip of my brush. I wish you guys could see this up close. I don't know if it's capturing the um, iridescence. It's so beautiful. And there you go. Now you could always, again, you could always go around the outer edge and just soften some of those lines. But I don't even feel like that's needed in these ranunculas because they are quite, you can really see all those little petals tight. Um, and making sure that you're leaving these white spaces in between your brush strokes. Now I'm gonna do another one next to it and I'm gonna go just strictly in a circle and not even picking up my brush. And let's see how that looks. Actually, let's start with that green in the middle again, or let's start with a cad yellow in the middle. See how that looks. Be careful, that cad yellow can be a little bright. I actually added it to some of that green. 
And so I'll do the middle and then I'm going to pick up my brush and add pink. So I'm just drawing those circles. Now I'll go in with that pink and draw some circles as well. Tapping off my brush. If you're not sure if you have too much water, just tap it off and get that excess. And I'm not even lifting my brush up. I'm just going in a circle. Now this might be a little bit more of an abstract type of look. Making sure you're leaving some white spaces in there. So you've got a couple options here, how you might want to paint that. Go in with that light pink again and make it a little bit bigger. So just the tip of my brush, the tip or the toe, they call that. And just, and the more kind of wonky I feel, your circles don't have to be perfect. I think the better. And then I'm barely going to take my brush, a clean brush, dampen it off and just add in a tiny bit of softening here and there, just softening some of those, but do not get rid of that beautiful white space you had in there. So there's two different types. Now I'm going to do one more and it will be kind of on its side. So let's do that right here. So I'm going to start in the middle again, which I should have started with, I keep forgetting that green color. Let me grab a brush here, guys, for the middle, that green or kind of yellowish color. And if you're looking at it from the side, I'm going to mostly see those type. I'm not going to see the entire circle. And then I'll just start going in with this pink and using kind of back and forth. Like this. And because those petals are kind of tight, I'm going to curl in the edges a little bit. And we could maybe add just a couple that we see in the back, like that. But it's really what I have noticed, a, a, a tight bud. And then let's go in with a tiny bit of that yellow. Just tap in here and there and take our green and let's create our stem here Ooh, that's a little bit too much so i'm going to going to dab that off now one thing i will tell you about these metallics is they don't quite blend as smoothly as if you were using watercolors, which would blend a lot more wet and wet. And then let's just do a bud here. So for the bud, I'm going to <clears throat> use a C stroke. So point, press, opening the belly, coming around, point, press the other side of that bud. And then coming down, I'm just tapping in while that's wet with a little bit darker green. And just using the tip of my brush. Now I'm going to wash and rinse my brush and go into a, add a little bit of that pink. So because that doesn't blend and kind of flow into that green, I might even just use some of that Quinn Magenta. 
and that way I'll get a little better blend there. Yeah, that's the only thing about iridescence. They kind of tend to be a little thicker, chalkier. They don't flow as much. So there's some ranunculus for you. I hope that helps. Um, the ranunculus as well, I might add, a lot of times have these kind of spiky branches. So you can create a branch coming out like that and then just they not branches leaves is what I meant they can have something like that now a lot of times I just like to make my own leaf like that and that's perfectly fine I kind of do hybrids on my flowers you could also do maybe a petal coming out um, of the side here and it's point press and then coming down the other side like that point press coming down the other side maybe add in a tiny bit more color there another leaf here point press Something like that. And I'm using a lot of the side of my brush actually point and then press like that. And there you go. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you're not gonna use the metallics, uh, you will get more of a spread in here and a flow. Actually, let's add one more and we'll just work it like that. So let me do one more here. Start with our green in the middle and we're not gonna use those metallics and I'll show you what I mean by how it might blend a little bit more. So we'll start with our center circle, just using that tip of my brush like that and now I'm going to go in with a light pink or I'm actually using a watered down version of my Quinn Magenta and I will start adding in those circles now if you can see that that Quinn Magenta is mixing with some of that green which I think is really beautiful and why I love watercolors and I'm just going around in a circle. I don't have upper rows in front of me, otherwise I would probably use that color. So as you see, because I, the watercolors behave a little differently, you're getting a lot more variation. So I'm getting some bleeding into the wet spaces. I'm getting a lot more darks and lights, and that's kind of a quality of our watercolors that I appreciate a lot and why I love them. There you go. Now I might just go back in and touch in a little bit here and there to give a little bit of blending just with a damp brush thirsty brush but I'm making sure I'm leaving those white spaces I'm not blending all of those and there you go let's create a little leaf coming out right here and there you go so kind of some differences there I hope that helps for those of you that had asked me if I would paint a ranuncula I think they're really quite easily I'm just going in now with a little bit darker I could even go in actually with a little cad orange or yellow 
I think would be really pretty blended with this or maybe even back to my green and just adding that in and letting it blend. This is such a great exercise in using light pressure with the tip of your brush. And I will link my brush strokes in here for you. So could you imagine a whole bouquet of these, how pretty that would be? I think that would be really lovely. And there you go. All right, everybody, I hope that was fun and that helped. And um, please visit my website. I've got lots of free drawings for there um, for you to download there. And I will list all my supplies. Check out my storefront now. I tried to make it easier for you to just go there and you could find whatever you want. Um, although I will be including some links uh, in the description as well. All right. I hope you had fun with this and I hope you'll give it a try.